My name is Susan Hanna, and um, I'm a co-author of a new book, new and original book of poetry, on Abraham Lincoln. My co-author is Erica Stucks, and she did about 25 pages, and I did the other 25. And the name of the book is Reflections on Abraham Lincoln, and it is up on Amazon.com, and it is reasonably priced. Uh, the reason I'm on YouTube today, which is February 7, 2009, is Abraham Lincoln's birthday is next Thursday, and uh, the 12th, and then President's Day is the 20th of February, and of course, 2009 is the bicentennial of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he was born in 1809. So I'd like to read you um, the poem some of it, Reflections on Abraham Lincoln. When, this is when he was a young man and uh, during the debates with Stephen Douglas. The recognizable high cheekbones and square jaw, the gaunt and narrow clean-shaven face, lean and lanky and ambitious, that was young Abraham Lincoln. His legs were two stately ionic columns that rose from the base of his large broken shoes to the capital of his high waist. He bore the weight of the Civil War on the entablature of his chest and his wide shoulders. In the first of seven debates with Douglas for the Senate seat in the city of Ottawa, Illinois on August 21, 1858, 20,000 people came and stood for three hours. Lincoln was driven from his 17-car train to the public square by way of the mayor's house in a carriage laden with fragrant, waxy, evergreen branches. He spoke after Douglas for 90 minutes in his swallowtail frock coat. His thin neck stuck out of his starched shirt collar like a turk and rooster's scrawny neck, his hands and feet protruding from two short sleeves and two short, rusty black trousers elongated him. Over the crowd he gazed that hot day his height always placed him above others. Though his feet were planted firmly on the platform, his head was silhouetted by the opacity of a milk-white blue sky. The news of the day traveled instantly. Reporters from the Chicago Tribune took down the words verbatim. Then by galloping horse and by locomotive, a transcriber traveled 80 miles northeast to Chicago, where the story was typeset and printed for the next morning's paper. Telegraph operators were put to work, too. Within three days, New Yorkers read about Lincoln, who instantaneously became well-known. Because of the wide dissemination of news by then, Lincoln went from being an obscure former one-term congressman in 1846 to president in 1861. After the seven debates were done, Lincoln remarked, I was better pleased with myself at Ottawa than at any other place. When he spoke that day, the gap between the planks on which he stood and the heavenly plane on which he thought was narrow. And that is why I remember so clearly when young and visionary and working in D.C., I visited the Ford Theater on 10th Street. I stood before a high glass and case display that showed the clothes that Lincoln wore the night he was shot. His white shirt and black vest and urbane frock coat hung picturesquely on a mannequin with a rod to the waist. His trousers, carefully placed for tourists to view, were draped lifelessly over a chair. And his high leather boots were bespattered with dried dirt and irreversibly creased. I walked curiously around the case. Where was the stovepipe hat that covered the head that had once uttered such lofty words. So that's the poem on Lincoln, some of it. It's called again the book Reflections on Abraham Lincoln. It is just now up on Amazon.com and it is reasonably priced. Uh, we have another uh, maybe five or seven page poem on Mary Todd Lincoln and that will be read on another YouTube um, viewing. So thank you.